This is Twit. All right. Hey, we've got a uh, question from our chat room. We do have a live live audience. Um, Joseph Dancer wants to know, what about security and secure stream? What type of encryption can be applied in real time to the stream? And uh, I've looked into this. I think I know the answer, but I will I will let the expert answer. Um, can you encrypt a WebRTC stream? No, I mean, WebRTC is encrypted by default and it's mandatory. So uh, actually, uh, they actually enforce even stricter uh, security considerations there because uh, I, I may be a bit a bit more I maybe go a bit more technical in there, but basically the way that you encrypt uh, the stream is basically using the secure version of RTP, which is the protocol that allows you to to exchange media packets. And there are a different a, a few different ways by which you can exchange the keys by that are used for this SRTP protocol, basically. And one of the the most commonly used approach was one that was easy to implement and would have been backward compatible, which was secure descriptions, which was compatible with the legacy VoIP equipment, for instance. But it was also less secure because it meant exchanging this keying information as part of the signaling information. And signaling is accessible to uh to to the web servers because they are those that handle the communication process basically and so which would have meant that it would have been really easy to intercept the traffic and decode it for instance and so in webrtc uh basically you 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 create instead the dtls channel over which and so it's a secure peer-to-peer -peer channel over which you exchange this keying information and then once you do that, you you can ex you can basically exchange the keys that you will use for SRTP, and nobody can snoop your traffic basically. And that's uh, I, I should clarify that this is true for the uh, peer to peer kind of approach in in WebRTC because that's how WebRTC was born. So if you have two peers in a WebRTC communication, then the, these two peers will create a DTLS channel between them, and so it create those uh, as uh, keying exchanges, and that that will work. Of course, this changes a bit when you have a server in the middle, like Janus uh, or others, because in that case, you actually kind of break this end-to-end, uh, peer-to-peer -end, um, -peer kind of communication pattern, because you always have a hop-by-hop -hop communication pattern instead. In a conference that goes to a server, you have uh, me talking to the server and the server then talking to you. So you have secure channels over the two legs with the server, but the server does have access to the to the media itself in that case because it needs to to re remove the encryption layer and then encrypt it again uh, to to get in the other direction for instance even though there are standardization activities to actually overcome that as well and one of those is actually uh, the so-called s frame um, s frame uh, standardization effort which basically tries to add an end-to-end -end encryption layer also in these uh, kind of scenarios where you go to a server, which means that you still do have that hop-by-hop -hop encryption because that's part of the WebRT specification, but what you exchange are not unencrypted frames. So you don't encrypt the unencrypted frames directly as you would normally do, but you encrypt the payloads uh, uh, additionally as well so that it's only... Uh, available and decodable and decryptable by the recipients of the conversation, which means that the server that sits in the middle is only able to decrypt the hop by hop layer because that it needs to to be like that because that's how WebRTC works, but does not have access to the media itself. And this is something that some uh, some have already started using. So we do have uh, support for this functionality in Janus as well, for instance, but it's still um, a work in process. So it's, the S-Frame is still an active working group in the ITF and they are still ironing out a few of the details about how the protocol is supposed to, to work because there are a few challenges in there in terms of how you exchange video, how you make sure that uh, everything works in a backwards compatible way and, and things like this. So uh, there are a few things that need to be done there, but uh, it's definitely something that is very dear to the to the WebRTC community in the first place. And, and, and so uh, it's something that can be done today as well. 